AMC may just go crazy this week. There is a lot we have to go over, including a medium to even possibly a large size gamma squeeze that could unfold very rapidly. Also, a lot of other indicators that are leading me to think this. Now, that is not to say you guys should make any trades based off of what I am saying, or it will or will not happen. I am simply providing you guys the factual data as well as my opinions mixed in here and there. So that's mainly what we're going to cover in this video, as well as just go over a broad update around the Ortex data, the technical analysis, the Stonko tracker data, also the institutional owners, and no time to die, what kind of numbers they did for this weekend, what to look forward to as far as bullish things for the market and potentially bearish things for the market. At the end of this video, I will give you guys something that I've not done in a very long time and is a price prediction. That goes without saying. That's not to say that this is going to happen, that it's set in stone. I am literally one guy making a YouTube video with four years of experience in the market. So whoever it is, I don't care if you have 30 or 40 years in the market, nobody knows what is going to happen, but opinions are very valuable and hopefully you guys do value an honest opinion. But do never, never base trades off of what one person is saying. Take in the, the factual data, the opinions, and then come to your own conclusions. So as long as we are clear on that all is good here hit that like button for me consider subscribing to the channel as well as let me know down below in the comment section what do you guys think about a possible breakout this week or even possibly next week my intuition and the data is telling me this week but it could drag out a little bit longer so let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section i pretty much respond to every single comment so if you don't agree with this let me know why you don't agree with this but provide some kind of you know insight or data to suggest just why I am wrong here. I will gladly entertain an argument for the bearish side or the bull side. So that's that. Let's get straight into this video. So AMC was down 2.49% 2 2 on Friday, up in after hours 0.51%. And as you guys do know, Mondays are typically green days for AMC, up in between 2 and 5% on average so that's not going to do too much as far as the price action down two and a half percent that was only down 95 cents on friday so that would only be you know a roughly two dollar move if we were up five percent but that would put us close to forty dollars if that does happen we are going to see a lot of contracts start to go into the money because really the main thesis surrounding this whole gamma squeeze situation is not just the the contracts that are in the money at the current time only 19,306 201,000 that are out of the money so looking at this it does not look significant but what the, what is really different from this week compared to prior weeks is we only have calls going up to the $95 strike and at the $95 strike you're only seeing 27,775 for open interest so a lot of this open interest is really compressed in between the next strike right at $38 and really the $70 strike you know going up to the 95 they're all significant besides the $58 strike but right outside of the money at the $38 strike you're looking at over 5,000 for open interest $39 strike 3400 and at the $40 strike you're looking at 10,582. Why this is substantial is because market makers, they control about 90% of these, the back end of these contracts. And what is really interesting is we are seeing very low volume. So we only seen 29 million for volume. If all, uh, if we even went to $40, you're looking at about 2 million shares that would potentially have to be bought by market makers. That's about 10% of the volume on you know any given day as far as last friday that would have been about 10 percent of the volume so that would cause a substantial move to the upside and i do think it could be a combination effect so that is basically the theory around the gamma squeeze but something else i do want to point out is there is a lot of people on the sidelines with a lot of money that are waiting to get into amc i think once we break out past 40 we should go to about 51 dollars. that's not exactly my price prediction but we don't really have have any you know resistance level until about $51 or just psychologically $50 per share we've been hovering in between 37 and $40 per share nobody knows what is going to be what is going to happen we've been channeled right it, in between this $3 price movement to the upside 
and to the downside continued like that since you know September really September 21st so it has been quite a long time since we had a breakout to the upside or the downside that's why you're seeing this low volume but when you're seeing the low volume it does not take much buys to go in for the stock to move it up a lot and same does go for selling but I don't think apes are selling but what I want to point out as well what is very interesting is that we are sitting at about $37.19 right right here is literally where we were at last time when we did see this rally when we went up to $53 which we did call out here on this channel that was August 24th literally at the same exact level we were at when we did see this massive green day up 20.34% this day alone so I do think we have the chance here to break out well past $40, get a lot of momentum, a lot of volume, a lot of traders that come back into the stock and see a massive movement to the upside. So that's what I expect. Bear case scenario, if the markets are shitty, if they're red and everybody's fearful, which we'll talk about that a little bit later into this video, the worst case scenario, I'm looking at about $35 per share, if not about $33 per share is going to be our next support level. And I don't think apes are selling we're not seeing a lot of shorting going on so it's pretty stagnant stagnant just waiting for a breakout at this point so that's a thesis around the gamma squeeze as well as why amc could move big it ultimately comes down to we are due for a big price movement to the upside or the downside if we were going to have a big move to the downside i think it would have happened on our lowest volume days as that is typically a bearish sign when you're not seeing a lot of volume in the stock so that's what you guys need to know from that. Let's now take a look at the Ortex data briefly. We're looking at 20.28% short interest percentage of free float, which is almost at all-time highs. Our all-time highs are a little bit over 21%. I believe 21.2% was our all-time high, so about 1% change to the positive. We will hit all-time highs yet again. 103.74 million shares that are sold short. Relative to the volume that we did see on Friday, that is over three times the total volume on Friday of shares that are still currently sold short. Short. So just imagine if some of these shares actually did start to cover for whatever reason, probably because the cost to borrow is just eating away at their portfolios at this current moment, you would see an explosive move to the upside as well as that whole group of FOMO buyers and day traders that are waiting to buy AMC. That is the X factor that we cannot account for. That is what is going to give us these explosive moves like we just did see last Thursday. Continuing on, the share utilization is at 87.21%, which is a comfortable amount. I don't expect this to move around a lot. Basically means that we have about 13% of the total shares that are available to be sold short that are not sold short that still can be sold short. So we can see the short interest go up higher, but I think the bear case for AMC is pretty much dissolved. So if anything, I think a lot of shorts that already have positions might try to, you know, average down on their positions and short the stock a little bit more to make make it easier to get out of their positions but I don't expect a whole lot of brand new shorts to enter positions but we will wait and see when the 13f filings do start to roll in get a better picture of what is exactly going on free flow on loan is at 22.38 percent meaning that it stayed pretty much unchanged but that is a two percent difference from the free flow on loan and the shares that are actually sold short out of the free flow on loan so we can go you know to about 21 percent. that is still my estimate by the end of the week so that'll be interesting to see what the data does come in for monday as well as tuesday because the t plus two sediment time we don't have the full numbers for even what happened on friday we did go down two and a half percent it is you know highly unlikely a lot of that was short sellers taking out new short positions but anything is possible it wouldn't surprise me at this point so let's now move on. Let's talk about No Time to Die. It snares 56 million in domestic box office debut, tops 300 million globally. And this is going to be the number a lot of people pay attention to 300 million globally because the last James Bond movie only did about 850 million total. And obviously, this movie has not been out very long. So they are probably going to beat the last movie. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not a huge James Bond fan. I, I don't think I've ever seen the movies, to be honest with you guys. But this movie will probably beat the one that did come out in 2018 i do believe see i don't know too much about this so please bear with me but it is likely to beat that and that is just a great sign overall for the movie theater industry let's read the key points 
No Time to Die tallied an estimated 56 million during its domestic opening weekend. Globally, the film has garnered 313.3 million since its international release two weeks ago. Near nearly 60% of moviegoers who turned up to see the film this weekend were over 35 years old, and 36% of ticket buyers aged over 45. I also do want to point something out for you guys. It says, while some box office analysts projected the film could reach 80 or even top 100 million during its debut in the U.S. and Canada, the latest James Bond film opening, no opening numbers are still a solid showing for the pandemic era. And CNBC, they usually don't talk too well about AMC. You guys already know the history of CNBC, AMC, Citadel, all of these other guys. But the fact that they are putting out a bit of a good word about the movie theater industry, I think is a great sign for AMC and just theaters in general. So that'll be interesting to see how that does play out. We have had a lot of good news around AMC fundamentally recently that has really been not getting enough credit, not really moving the stock because the markets have been so fearful. And that is what I want to talk about next. And basically the big fear, the debt ceiling concerns are pushed back until around December 3rd. So I do think this will give us, you know, a couple weeks of less uncertainty to see the markets go up yet again but anything is possible the markets act really funky things that should be positive for the markets can be seen as negative things that are negative for the markets could be seen as positive but all eyes are going to be on jerome powell and what does happen coming on november 3rd meeting if he is going to start tapering what the plan is what the timeline is going to be as well as that we do have inflation numbers that are coming out on monday i do believe Believe. If these numbers come in really high, then we definitely can see a sell-off. If the numbers come in low, that will ma make the markets uh, ma massively rally. So that is very important to know. CPI is going to be a huge deal for investors coming on Monday. So that's what you guys need to know from that. Let's talk about the institutional ownership. And for uh, majority speaking, like we've went over plenty of times, the average cost on a lot of these firms that are reporting these 13F filings is in between, you know, 40 and $51. So that is just telling me they are bullish. They think the stock is going to go higher than 40 to $51. If they're holding on to their positions, that is seen as a positive, but we have not got too many filings. All of these are from October. So not too much data to actually go off of. It looks to be bullish to me, but we are seeing three firms that have completely sold out. So I will pay attention to that. Now, as far as my actual price prediction i think logically you know just to pull myself to my own standards and you know just to track what i am personally thinking i think around 45 dollars is a reasonable price to get to by friday that is really where we did see this up and down motion after we did see this very green day over 20 percent positive day like i said august 24th that puts us right here i'll go ahead and mark this so we can revise on this coming you know probably by friday i think getting up to this line right here 45 dollars is very reasonable with a strong green day or just a strong week overall if we do have market fear expect us to go down worst case scenario to about 33 dollars per share but if we get that volume coming back into the stock if we have a 50 60 70 80 90 100 million uh, for volume day then we're going to see a big price movement to the upside that is just simply how it works low volume is actually bullish for us because it gives us uh, you know that that cushion per se to see that next leg up so that's what you guys need to know if you guys got any value out of this video hit that like button for me consider subscribing to the channel let me know down below in the comment section if you agree with this what's your price target if you don't agree with this let me know some factual data or just something to support why you don't agree with this because i give you guys the bullish sense give me the bear sense if you don't agree with this but just disrespect and trying to divide apes with really negative comments won't be tolerated in the comment section anymore at least here on this channel if you want to do that go to a different channel do whatever you guys want to but we over here have no room for negativity without you know some kind of valid purpose or a valid sense just give me your opinions that's that's all i want to hear we can you know have a friendly conversation about it and come to our own conclusions afterwards so 
That's it for this video, guys. If you want to directly support the channel, check out the links for public as well as the link for Weeble down below in the description of this video. Also, if you guys want access to all my trades in real time, I have been buying a ton of options as well as shares of AMC almost every single day. If you guys want to be notified on any of that action or just any trade overall, whether it's a day trade, swing trade, long-term investment with stock options and or crypto, check that out. Also, uh, link down below in the description of this video. It is very expensive in in expensive. It's not expensive, inexpensive, but that is going to be all for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.